Okay. So uh, today being uh, Monday, September 21st, and it is one minute pe past seven, I will call the meeting of the Hadley Community Preservation Act Committee to have a meeting. Um, we're going to convene. So um, did everybody ha get a chance to review the minutes from the last meeting? Yes, I uh, did. Mark? I believe I sent out uh, a one revised version, and I may have to revise it again as I just got the volunteer handbook from David, and I'll, I'll go over it tonight to make sure that I've got all my formatting correct. All right. No, it, um, number the items discussed in number three it was it decided to set five hundred thousand dollars aside. That was done long time ago. Does okay. that mean that it was done at last week's meeting or was it long time ago? I was noting it as something new last week, but if it was not new, it was new to me. <laughs> okay, no, this happened quite a while ago. Okay. So I, think, I don't know if we have to correct that or not, but I don't know if it's that big a deal or what. I wasn't there, but reading the minutes, it sounded like Mary had corrected the numbers to show that. That's yes. what I took from it. Right, but it just says that uh, and the minutes say that uh, we decided to set aside at the last meeting. No, oh, we didn't. okay. Yep. We did that a long time ago. Correct. Okay. So that's all. Um, does anybody have any comments about the, the minutes? Or in uh, hearing none, I'd like to, a motion to accept the minutes as corrected. Come on. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Okay. Um, Anybody, any discussion about the minutes? I'm okay. just gonna let you know that I'm going to abstain. Okay, that's good. So, because okay. I was not present for that meeting. I did right. read the minutes, but I wasn't present. Okay, so all those in favor, raise your hand. Aye. One, two, Aye. three, four, five, six, yes. Six, yes, uh, zero. No, one, abstention. Did I get that right? Uh, how about you? Well, I can't vote anyway. I only get to vote in case of a tie. No, you can vote. Oh, I can? Well, then I'm going to say seven yes. So. Okay. Uh, a, a quick review of the financials. You're on, uh, Mary. Do we some, use do we use the some, numbers from last week? Yeah, um, the same numbers as last week, um, which had included the CPA additions from the August real estate tax bill. So the available general fund balance is total of a million nine forty one one fifty five point one nine. Mm -hmm. Of that, five hundred thousand is set aside in a reserve for a general fund reserve. Um, there's 98,380 in open space, 23,052.15 in historic, 288, 339.46 in the housing set aside. So the available general fund is 1,031,383.58. There is a reserved um, for expenditures, things that have already been approved at town meeting that have not been spent yet is 711,915.49. So the total fund balance is 2,653,070.68. And I did ask Linda Sanderson for revenue for the last five years, just to get a sense of how much money comes in each year on the CPA. And um, last year was a very big year at 561,000, in part because the state gave 54% of our current year CPA. And then, right. um, also, our interest was 114000 because we had a lot of money not spent. <laughs> right. So, um, so that was a big year. But if you look at just Hadley's amount, it does sort of steadily grow each year. So even if the state doesn't come through, um, there's still about 290000 that Hadley puts in 
plus whatever interest is earned. Andy, right. do you know, or anybody, do you know if the, um, the match, state matches includes like the interest and stuff, or is that just strictly on what um, gets withheld from the, the real estate taxes? Like the state match uh, has nothing to do with the Hadley contribution. Oh, it depends okay. on not only the real estate uh, license fees, but sometimes the state legislature puts extra money in. Uh, so sometimes we get two payments a year instead of one. And we never know how much it's going to be. But isn't it a certain percentage of how much we actually put aside or not really? No, I don't believe it has anything to do with how much we set aside. With yeah. the exception of uh, communities at 3% right. do get extra payments. Which we are at 3%. That's right. That's right. Thank you. So. Okay, is everybody... Uh, is everybody makes uh, is happy with the financials? Do we kind of understand what's going on? Yep. Anyone has any suggestions for other things to include, or if it's confusing at all, just let me know. Okay, uh, Mary. I'm. When is a good time to get a hold of you? Because I might want to sit. I may, might want to talk to you about certain things. Sure. Is, um, you, Give me a call. You know, I'm, I'm generally at my office between nine and five, but, um, you know, it's early evening is good. Okay. That's good. It's get dark. It gets dark really early now anyway. So yeah. <laughs> that's a good time for me also. Good. But, okay. Um, do we need a vote on the financials or we're all set? I think we're all set. Um, Are there any substantial changes from last meeting? No, the only thing I had done from the last meeting was put in what the potential might be if after if we approve all of these based right. on the buckets. So it showed the new buckets. Um, and the, the breakdown in the buckets, the town ha accountant hasn't broken it down yet, including the last um, town meeting approvals. But I just took what it was before that and subtracted out what we have approved at town meeting based on those buckets to get these figures. So they should certainly agree when they, when they get caught up. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, uh, Mary, it says on the bottom of the first page of the financial statement, November 2020 match, which is next month, it says 11% match from state expected. Is that for the month of November? That that was, um, Andy had mentioned that last spring when um, the, town, the state said even with COVID, there may be no funds available because the state's in such bad shape financially, but they had already set aside, um, say, 11%. Um, so I had made a note of that then. So I don't know if it's accurate or not, but it, it may be greatly reduced this year, but it didn't sound, they did already have some money approved for this that they thought they'd be sending out. Correct. I don't, you know, that's, so I don't really know, you know, right. <laughs> what it will be. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm, I can imagine it would be reduced. Oh yeah, but it's still gonna be, uh, just if you take an average of the, uh, State match, it's 48, 49% if you just take a quick average. Yeah. So it's not 11%. But, right, but they're not expecting this to be a usual year. Correct. I understand that. And I know that. And we won't know. And we know, we all know how, the, how quick the state acts. And they're going to take their time and you're not going to tell them any different. <laughs> so. Yeah. All right, um, so did everybody have a chance to review some of the requests that we got? Um, Alan, can you give a quick overview of what's being asked for the Russellville Cemetery, the North Hadley Cemetery, and the Hakanam Fence Replacement? Just uh, you know, a minute or two on each project just to refresh our memories and to make sure that we know what we're voting on. Sure, so uh, we're asking for for North Hadley, the North Hadley Cemetery, $60,000 to uh, address 94 gravestones. Yeah. For, for Russellville, we're asking for 30000 to address 42 gravestones. And for the Hockenham Fence replacement, we're asking for 
$65,000 to replace the fence. Right. And uh, for the Russellville Cemetery, it's really, you're kicking in $3,000, is that correct? Right. Uh, for the North Hadley Cemetery, you're kicking in another 5000 Correct. And for the Hockenheim fence replacement, is there any money left over to kick in for three we're planning on we're, we're allocating three for that okay three. thank you alan i'm i'm sorry i wasn't here at the last meeting can you just explain to, did you say sixty five thousand for the fence that's correct and, go ahead go ahead well, that includes taking apart the old fence and replacing it and buying the, uh, using some of the pieces over again and buying the chain and doing other things. Is that correct? Right, right. We'll need to have, we'll need to hire somebody to, to um, uh, function as a construction supervisor ob observer because this is, um, it's a little bit different than the gravestones. This is more like a, a public works project. So uh, it needs to have some supervision. We'll need to uh, we'll probably need to update the bid documents. Um, we'll, uh, we may need a police detail for the traffic. Mm -hmm. So all that, all, and oh, and of course it includes also um, 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 installing or modifying the grass strip between the fence and the road to uh, allow cars to park with a little bit more security um, because the, the grass strips gets pretty muddy. Mm -hmm. So we'll have a reinforced turf. It'll still look like grass, but it'll have crushed aggregate underneath it. So that's what, that, that, so the cost and the budget includes all those items. Okay, and you did account for prevailing wage? Yep, well, uh, it, it'll have to be done by a prevailing wage. Okay. Yeah. Right. And again, again this will go out to bid, so who knows? Okay. Right. Okay, yeah. good. Now, uh, seeing there is only, um, we don't have all the money in the, so which account, which set aside is, are we expected to take the money out of? You had suggested last week for the Russellville Cemetery to take um, the 23,052.15 out of historic. Correct. Balance out of the general. Right. Okay. But we have, to, we have to drain the specific account. Sure. First. Right. That will drain the historic. Okay. So then we are going to take out of the historic <coughs> set aside. 23,052.15 and make up the difference from the general fund. Is that correct? Yeah, the 6947.85. 6947.85. Six, is general. For the 30,000. Right, and right. The, the other two will come out of the general. Correct, correct. One of them. One of them has to come from two separate spending mm -hmm. units or whatever because we have to uh, eliminate one set aside first before we can access any more money. So um, that uh, the way I look at it, and as I perused these over the la last week, these are going to come out of the CPA funds. It, they aren't going to add any tax revenue to the town. There aren't going to be any other expenses available. And personally, I feel that the simple fact that the cemeteries are in such atrocious shape is a shame on the town. And we're fortunate to have the CPA account that has as much money in it to repair and fix up these grave, uh, gravestones and fences and such for the town cemetery. So I don't really have a problem with the, with the first request. 
Um, does anybody else have any comments about the Russellville Cemetery gravestone restoration? No, no, we are, so if I just did my numbers right, we are taking approximately $131,947.85 out of the general fund, which would be the rest of that, the remainder of the three balances. Right, but uh, there were three separate requests, so we have to okay. vote on each one separately. Okay. So, um, so the first one that we're going to vote on would be the Russellville Cemetery Gravestone Restoration. Is that correct, yep. Alan? If that's what you if that's what you would like to do, yes. Well, which one was which uh, of the requests that we got last week? Which one was the first one? <laughs> Well, you're talking about uh, doing Russellville first so you can drain the account. So it makes sense to take that up first. Okay. Okay. Yes, I, I did list Russellville first. In right. Minutes. Right. That's what I'm kind of going, going by. <laughs> I don't know if that was uh, the first one or not, but uh, that's what we're gonna be doing. Russellville Cemetery. Okay. So. Is it gonna, it's gonna be coming from the historical set aside, is that correct? It's gonna drain um, that. I got it. And, got it. and then it. draw from the general as well. Yes, we're taking twenty three thousand oh fifty two fifteen from the historical set aside, and then six thousand nine hundred and forty seven dollars. Correct. Correct. Eighty five cents. Yep. Um, okay. Uh, my application uh, says that. Um, do we want to fill all this in or just the vote? What, uh, what does the committee feel? Do what do we, you mean by fill all it in? Well, it says this request received on CPC on uh, by a date and provided to, to you guys on a date. Um, yeah, that all has to be filled in. Okay. So I would probably say the date that Amy received them. Which would be September 8th, right, Amy? That, that's correct, September 8th. Well, I received, I received Alan's prior, but um, the uh, fence was a little bit later. I mean, I have it dated um, from the day that I received them. I don't remember off the top of my head. Alan might know, but- Okay, wait a minute, hold it. On the very top of this uh, funding request form, there's a date of August 27th. That sounds right. Yeah. So do we want to use that date? I used to just put the dates. That was the deadline for requests. Uh, okay. That was easiest. Of course, you can do it any way you'd like to do it. And uh, everybody got, when, uh, Amy, when did you provide copies to the members on this? Was that about the same time? No, I, I mean, I received everything on the 8th and I everyone got copies on, oh, I don't. September 10th. Thank you. <laughs> I'm looking at my email, so September 10th. Okay. Um, I'm going to say is sufficient detail provided to consider the request. I'm going to put a yes. Um, no other information was required. So NA, <clears throat> NA, okay. Does anybody have any other comments for Alan or questions? No, now Alan, um, we're, we're about to take a vote on this. You know that you have to sell this at town meeting, correct? I, I understand that fully. Okay. Do we Mary's gonna help me though. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, do we wanna put a time limit on this? You have to use the funds within a certain period of time? Two years. Two years. Mm -hmm. We usually okay. do the two years, so we should probably stay consistent. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Two years uh, from the date of town meeting. 
Okay. And then make sure it says any non expended funds or did we already do that already? I don't know if we did that. Uh, that, would, that is a good question. I think we need to add that to the request that just to cover our asses. Because sometimes me. it goes in, sometimes it doesn't on the um, warrant, mm -hmm. the way it's, it's written. So if we can say it on the permit that any funds not expend, and expended um, return to CPA funds, and you can always put a caveat unless a request for extension has been submitted. And I noticed the articles also said return to the appropriate set aside. Yeah. I think I think the cemetery committee has been pretty good about doing that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we have had money left over. Proper. So. Aside. All right. Um, anybody have any other questions? No, oh, you guys moved. Oh, don't do that to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, um, hearing none, I'm going to call for a vote. Do we want to recommend this proposal for the Russellville Cemetery Gravestone yeah. Restoration? I'll make a motion. Okay. I'll, I'll second. Okay, we have a motion forward. by Paulette and a second by Amy. Um, all those in favor, signify by so I can see raising your hand. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. How about Denise? Denise, we can't see your hand. Oh, where is Denise? Uh, she, she may have stepped away. Step out. So six zero one abstention. Six zero one. And today is the twenty first, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much for that one. Now we go to the North Hadley Cemetery. Um, this is going to be gravestone. Uh, this is going to be for a survey, Alan, or no, it's for gravestone restoration. Right, cemetery. Same thing, same thing as uh, Russellville, just more. This right. one has ninety-four stones. Right. Uh, correct. Uh, and this one is all going to come out of the general fund. Correct. Right. Am I right. reading that right? Right. Hey, I'm doing good so far. That's kind of scary. Um, okay, does anybody have... This wasn't a official... Because I don't have anybody... I don't have an official request, so... I guess we're just going to, how do we want to? I thought it would be the same thing. Alan sent me over the same for both. He said on that, on that one, on the Russellville. If there should be a separate application for, for, for North Hadley. Mm -hmm. It would be, and it would be all the same dates. So if you don't have it, Edwin, don't worry. We'll uh, just. I I got it. North Hadley, this was the North Hadley. Uh, I was, I was looking at uh, something else. Okay. okay, so this this was a request uh, received on by CPC on the twenty seventh, and it was provided to the members on the ninth. Was that correct, Amy? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, the other one is yes. Um, no. Does anybody have any, uh, this is going to come out of general fund? 100% out of the general fund. Right. General fund. Yep. And does anybody have any questions or comments or anything about uh, Alan's request for the North Hadley Cemetery Gravestone Restoration? Nope, the only thing I would add again 
with the condition that it's used within the common language. Right. Um, used within two years. Right. Now, you know what? I just thought of something. Who's going to, uh, are we just going to trust the corner office to do this or are we going to provide them with a, um, with a draft or something that says this and who's going to do that? What do you mean? Well, for the motion. The wording for the warrant. Right. The wording for the warrant. Uh, we usually submit something and then they give it to town council to look at. Right. Because a lot of times um, we've put specific language in um, if we bring it over and it doesn't necessarily transfer completely to the warrant. Okay, so is it, who's gonna be responsible for doing that? Is it gonna be me or is it gonna be Paulette? Or I can do it. I can use one of Andy's from previous year. We've done a lot with the cemetery. Right. Yeah. What I've done before in the past is I plagiarized and mm -hmm. I just changed oh. the title, changed the date and it passed muster very well. It was, if it passed the first time, if you just change the name and everything, you keep the rest of the words the same. Right. It shouldn't be a problem. Okay. Um, hearing no other comments, do we want to vote on this? So, I will make a motion. We need a motion to either recommend or not recommend. This recommend $30,000 come from general fund. No, 60,000. No, 60,000. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. My bad. 60,000. Okay. To come from the general fund. And Mark will second. Okay. And a uh, uh, motion by Paulette and Mark is seconded. Any other comments? Okay, all those in favor signify by raising their hand. Aye. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, seven yes. Uh, anybody opposed? No. Anybody abstaining? Nope. And today is the 21st. Yep. Hey, all right. Um, okay. Hey, we're flying through this stuff. Now we are on to Hockenham. Right. Um, fence. Uh, fence. Uh oh. No. Oh, fence replacement project. I do have it. Don't. If you don't see an application, I actually, I don't think we have an exact application. Am I correct, Alan? I don't, you, I you think. You have it, but it's embedded in the report. Okay. It's, uh, I can't, I don't know what page it is, but it's, uh, it should be uh, towards, uh, towards the middle of the report after all the um, historical information and, you know, what we're planning to do, then there's an actual CPA application. I would have sent it to you separately, but it was a PDF, so I couldn't, I couldn't uh, mm -hmm. break it out. Okay. That was why I couldn't find it earlier. I do remember seeing those when we, when we scanned through them. Yeah, I do. I remember seeing it, but that doesn't mean that. Um... It's there. It's on page six. We Under budget is the dollar amounts, if that's what you're especially looking for. No, he's looking for the application. I'm looking for the actual application. If the budget's on six, then the application will be on page five. You see it, Mary? I see a project summary. Um, budget, let's see. CPA pro project application. Yeah, what you're looking for is something that says CPA project application. Yeah, I don't. Hmm. Uh huh. Maybe this is it. Is it a? Uh, would that be it? Uh, I don't know how to. Just hold it up in front of the um, That's camera. It. That's it. Edwin has to talk, so his screen gets big. 
It, it does look, it says CPA project application. Yeah. Does it say Hakanam Cemetery fence replacement? No. Okay, it's on page 38. <laughs> we hit it yeah. well. <laughs> page 38 is the CPA project application. Yep. I've got it up on my screen here. Where? And 39. 38 and 39 out of 59. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's one of the big ones, at, um, Edwin. Look for one of the big uh, packages I printed. Yeah, I did. I am. Uh, it, it's it's this big one, the fence replacement project. Yeah, so it's, it's more than halfway through. If yeah. you pour the maps, well, there's a lot of maps. Yeah, there's a lot of maps. It <laughs> says... Well, it says page one and two, but that's because it. If you allow me to share, I've got it right in front. Yes, so, please do it. Okay, I just got to find it. Here it is. I think this is it. Page 38. Is it right there? I still can't find it. Look at your screen, Edwin. That's it. Yeah. So it's actually, it's in on the 38th page, but the pages aren't numbered sequentially like that. Right. So it's, a new it's, it's really an attachment to the report. Right. So what do you need information for? Well, I just want to make, make sure that we know what we're spending the money on. And right. I've got it up on the screen if you want. Yep. So do we, well, I... I filled out a whole bunch of stuff on the other two applications. I don't know if I should fill out that one. Well, that's page two. If you want to go up one page before it. Yep. It'll start it as well. Right. Well, this is just the project information. Yeah. So if we want to know about the money. Right. That's, that's all. Yeah. So the money's on this page. So it's $68,000 total. CPA request is sixty-five. Right. Um, the request is 96%. Right. Well, I can't At least cemetery it. committee. So they've got... Um, Edwin, is there a spot on the other two that you had assigned? Did not you... yet. Um, it just says... It just fills out that information, but do you have to sign it? No. No, okay. I do not. So... Um, as long as worry you know, about it then. Okay, I'm, I'm not gonna, because <laughs> it's not all my money anyway, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, a portion of it is, but not all of it. <laughs> okay. Okay, right here. I got the second page of it, where it has the funding. So this is coming all out of the general fund. Yep. Yep, historical is empty. Mm -hmm. well, yep. And does anybody have any uh, comments about this uh, project? Uh, hearing none. I'll make a motion to uh, fund $65,000 for the Hockenham Cemetery Fence Replacement. Um, all money coming out of the general fund with the caveat that the funds be used within two years. If not, it, the, any extra money will go back to the general fund unless a request for extension has been submitted. Okay, good. Is there a second? Second. Second by Amy. Very good. Thank you. Okay, um, anybody, have, anybody else have any other comments? You know, I, I think, do are we the ones that say the Historical Commission approved it also? I know oftentimes in the warrant, it'll say which committees have approved it. I don't know if, I mean, the Historical Commission approved all three of these. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that is a that. better, uh, better to say it at town meeting. I don't know if we have to say it in the actual motion. Okay. But, um, uh, hearing in other, no other comments, I will uh, call for a vote. And all those in favor of 
Paulette's motion seconded by Amy to fund the uh, uh, the fence project on the Hakanon Cemetery signified by saying aye or raising your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, seven, yes. Zero, no. And zero abstentions. Okay. And this was vote taken, well, um, 9, 20. Okay. Well, thank you very much. We just want to say on behalf of the cemetery committee, we deeply appreciate your past support, your present support, and approval of these projects, which I think will uh, improve, definitely improve the cemeteries and, and be a, uh, a good thing for the town going mm -hmm. forward. I think they will be. I think they will be too. And your your work is coming ahead of you because you have to sell this at town meeting. And primarily, the money is available. It's not going to be in the budget to make the town's budget bigger. So I don't see what the problem is. This is something that should have been done a long time ago. That town's always supported these projects. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Alan. I okay. really appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, thank you, folks. Right. Thank good you. good luck at town meeting. Yeah. Okay. Um, next is the Hadley Common Landscape Concept Study. Excuse me, um, Edwin. Yeah. Uh, on this, do you mind if we skip this one and just go to the last one, just because I don't see Chris here and Molly's here and, and Dylan? So just. Just because Chris isn't here to speak, maybe we can just ask Molly and Dylan to look at theirs first. Sure, yes. go for it. Hi, Molly. Hi, Dylan. Uh, okay, so this is the Hadley Emergency Rental Assistance for COVID-19, a limit of $50,000. Am I correct? Um, well, that's a good question because last week, one of the questions that came up during the meeting was whether or not people thought that $50,000 was sufficient. Um, we admittedly had pulled that number um, basically because that's what Sunderland had done to our north with the thought that Sunderland would have a fair number of rental units. And so since that time, we actually did some more legwork and have more information for you tonight. Um, what we couldn't answer last week was how many rental units actually exist in Hadley. And we still don't have 100% information, but the uh, town, the um, assistance assessor was really helpful. And what we learned is that there are 96 two families 11 three families, and then six properties that have eight units or more. What we don't know is how many single families there are because that information really isn't recorded anywhere. So the, the population is definitely higher than this because we certainly know that there are single family homes that are rented. Um, I'm sure many of them are for student rentals, but there are also um, individuals or families renting those, those properties as well. So um, what Dan Zadonik was able to say is that we know for sure we have at least 244 rental units and that number is probably north of that if you would be north of that if you add in the single family rentals. We tried to get a handle on, you know, I mean, it, it's hard. All we can do is really speculate that based on where we're at right now, um, I think what we know is that another week has gone by and it's, looking painfully obvious that there's not going to be a stimulus package anytime soon. So I think that reinforces the thought that people who are living paycheck to paycheck are likely going to be hitting a wall here um, in November, December timeframe. And so the need is, is very likely to be there. Um, Jane from the Valley CDC offered an opinion um, and, it's, and she said it's only that because again, it's highly dependent on what these folks are doing for work and who's been impacted by uh, COVID-19. But she, she thought a reasonable thought process would be to say anywhere from 10 to 20% of these properties could over the next um, 
year or so be running into trouble, financial trouble and, and una unable to make their rent payments. So if we look at the program, the way it's laid out, um, and I, this is like really back of the envelope, but if we said, okay, um, if we had 20% um, of the 244 units we know about um, were to actually need assistance, then we're looking at, you know, maybe 50 properties. Um, and if they're anywhere between single and two family, three family, looking at the rent reimbursement rates, uh, it, it actually does support us asking for $100,000 and not $50,000. You know, I, again, I think the thought was as long as we're not taking money away from another CPA endeavor um, and with the full intent that at the end of the two year period, any unexpended or unreimbursed uh, or undistributed funds would come back to CPA, um, that it probably makes more sense for us to, to make that ask a little bit larger in case people are really falling on tough times. So Molly, is there a reason you're gonna go out two years instead of just one year? Um, really that's mainly been consistent with what how CPA funds have been distributed in the past, Paulette. And I think clearly, I mean, if, if the economy is dramatically different next year, then there's no reason why we wouldn't shut the program down and return the funds earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's just more fear of the unknown. Yep. And who, who would be administering the funds again? And what is their percentage? Are they getting some of this money? So Dylan, you want to take it from here? Yeah, so Jane directed us to Community Action Pioneer Valley and Claire Higgins up there. And I uh, was able to get into contact with them. Um, they're fresh to this, new to this as well. Um, so they did their first round with Amherst. Amherst had a similar program uh, where they funded $200,000 in rental relief. Um, and they did it in a different uh, rounds. So they've done one round so far. Uh, and basically, they left it as rental assistance. They didn't put a number on it because they were unsure what they'd see for feedback, how many people would apply. Uh, and they're moving into round two. So those two rounds that Community Action Pioneer Valley has administered for Amherst, they've kind of dialed in their approach uh, and been able to figure out that it's kind of a uh, online uh, pre-application that kind of filters people out, yes and no questions. Do you live in Hadley? Uh, have you been financially negatively impacted by COVID? Uh, and then once those pre-screening questions are done, uh, Community Action Pioneer Valley gets on the phone and helps them apply. Um, right now they are trying to dial in how much that costs when they got the Amherst, uh, opportunity, they had answered our RFP and, uh, they are currently looking back at what they've done so far in the first round and trying to figure out pricing for the future. So right now I don't have a full answer, uh, on what the community action plan of Valley is going to charge to administer. Uh, but they're in the process of figuring out that number uh, and getting it back to us. Okay. So I don't have an issue with the project per se. I do have an issue with not knowing how much of the money is going to go to administration of implementing the program because uh, I'm not sure what costs are covered under this program. Um, as far as that, if you can use administration, fees. Um, I know we had a thing here from affordable housing. Hang on. I'm just looking through. Yeah. Jane sent an email, I think, Paulette, with some of those details. Okay. I don't have that email. So, uh, excuse me. Um, there was a, you rattled off a whole bunch of numbers of how many people are renting in town, but um, last week you mentioned that they have to also meet the qualifications of the poverty level for the county or for the town or what? 
So do we know what that is? Uh, is it for the county? Is it for the municipality or what? Is, is, can anybody answer that question? So the number being used is the area median income. I don't know if, Molly, do you know if that's per town or per county? So I was just looking at it. It says, um, let's see, uh, these are attached guidelines as a good starting point, which is, as you said, the uh, median income. Mm -hmm. It looks like, I, I'm not sure if this is Hadley or if this is like Hampshire County. Mm -hmm. I think it's Hampshire County. That would make sense. A, yeah. lot of, a lot of when we do a lot of mortgages and it has to deal with the affordable housing, it, it seems like it's always been more closer to a Hampshire County. Um, so I, I, because they're not going to do it from, I don't think they'll do it from town to town, but we are going to be much different than Boston and things like that. So oh, sure. Yeah. Right. So of the, of the 244 units, do we know how many would be eligible that already belong to an organization that would support them anyway? You know, would it be all 244 rental units? Would it be... 10% of those that are be below the median income level? Or we don't know those figures? No, we wouldn't have um, folks' personal financial information, Edwin. Right. And that's why uh, Community Action Pioneer Valley kind of approached Amherst with a two-phase system, doing it in two stages, just in case there was uh, too much interest in the first round or not enough. Uh, it allowed them to kind of use the funds over two different stages. That makes right, sense. but now in order, in, in order for a person to participate in this program, if it's approved, it would be, um, they have to, the applicant would have to be a member of an organization, correct? Uh, uh, a housing authority or something like that, is that correct? I don't think they have to be a member. I think they just apply. Right. You just have to be a Hadley resident to apply. Right. And then you need to be able to prove um, that you're eligible for these funds by showing that you directly have been harmed, um, you know, through loss of work, reduced hours, whatever, um, specifically due to the pandemic. So, you know, it's not intended. I mean, if somebody's a, a spendthrift and they you know, are about to file bankruptcy long before the pandemic hit, it, that's, that's not really the point of the program. It needs to be somebody um, who was furloughed or again, laid off uh, restaurant workers, those folks. So with this, and this would, how would it aff this affect the number of students that are residents of Hadley? Um, it shouldn't, I think, it, you know, in most cases, Mm -hmm. um, and, and not all. I mean, I, I'm sure there's some kids putting themselves through college, right? So right. there may very well be kids who are heavily relying on um, their restaurant jobs or, mm -hmm. or whatever and who've lost their work and now can't pay their own rent. But to the extent mom or dad signed off on their lease as a guarantor, um, I wouldn't think that they would be eligible. Okay. So then I come back to my question of what is the administration fee going to be for this program? Mm -hmm. Well, as, as Dylan said, um, when we first looked at Sunderland, now Sutherland, Sutherland, Sunderland, that town to the north of you, yeah. um, when they went through this process, they estimated their, I, for the $50,000, I think they had a budget of $6,000 for administration. Um, that was from the Franklin, help me out, Dylan, Franklin County. Franklin County um, Housing Authority. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Redevelopment Authority. Um, so that was their number. And I think we were hoping that we would be somewhere along that line, but because we couldn't work with them. And then Dylan did all of this legwork with community action. Mm -hmm. um, community action only had figures for the Amherst program, but they were approaching it very differently from what 
we're trying to do. We're trying to keep it simple on a first come first serve mm -hmm. basis to mitigate the amount of administrative work. But again, they're unfortunately right now we don't have um, figures from them. So Paulette, I, I'm thinking maybe some way around it would be to say as long as the administrative costs don't exceed a certain percentage of the funds offered or? Mm -hmm. That's what I, I was going to say, may, maybe not to exceed 10% or perhaps less because that was what, six out of 60 up in Sunderland? 6,000 out of 50,000 for Sunderland. Oh. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they, they didn't want to put a number on it for me uh, when I talked to them because they are getting close to uh, taking on East Hamptons as well. And they're thinking there's going to be an economy scale with Amherst, the second round, East Hamptons, and potentially ours. So they're trying to figure out the pricing between all those three. So I'm, I'm waiting to hear back. Um, but the six, six out of 50,000 ends up being 12% as an administration piece. Yeah, that, that's, that's my concern. Uh, I think that the money should be available to people who need it. And I don't want to vote on something to recommend to town meeting, something that not everybody is going to be able to participate in because there's going to be an administrative fee that is going to eat away at a lot of the funds. That's my, that's my concern. And I want to be able to go and, and at town meeting and support this article, but at town meeting, if it's going to go to half of it's going to be towards administrative fees or something. I don't know if I'm going to want to be able to support that. I, I think Molly's recommendation of putting a percentage cap on it might be a good uh, middle ground because there is community action Pioneer Valley is going to take on a big task to uh, do the legwork to make sure qualified Hadley residents are getting the funds and make sure we're supporting the right community members. So there is the cost there and I would just hate to see no one get any assistance and have people in our community struggle. Uh, so. mm -hmm. No, I, I, that's, that's my concern. I'm just putting it out in front of everybody that I just want the people who need the money, get the money. Right. And typically, I, don't want it, I don't want it sucked up by administrative fees or right. by an organization because they're, they're doing all the legwork and, oh, yeah, you applied for, for $500, but you're only going to get 200 I think if, if we could put a 10% cap for a nonprofit organization to do, I'm, I'm assuming that Claire Higgins is a nonprofit, I'm not sure, but yeah, anyway. They're, they're a well-known yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. very well-known nonprofit and, organization. I, and I, they're I, providing us a service. Yeah, they're giving us assurance that our money isn't going to the wrong, you know. So that's for what, that's a, you know, I think we could justify that based on the peace of mind that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean. Uh, I have a question. Um, I do own one rental property. It's the house next door my father-in-law had that my, we have a family member renting. Does that make it so that I shouldn't participate in this vote? I don't expect them to apply, but um, I just thought I'd ask for a clarification. Um, hmm. I don't think so. I think you should vote. That would be my opinion. Right. Yeah. Well, then I have a comment on the fees. For, um, you know, whoever is processing these applications, it's a lot of personal information. And, it, you know, to have a, pro a professional nonprofit on the side organization handling all of that for people's personal information and keeping it consistent and keeping it fair, I think is, um, there's value to that. I, I like the idea. I mean, 10% could be up to $10,000. I don't know if they'd spend that much, but I like much. having that, that as a way to continue forward. Cause I think in, you know, by Springtown meeting, the, the need may be much more acute or people may need to, these funds over the winter. So um, I hope we can come up with a way that that is comfortable. Mm -hmm. Right. And will there be a, I mean, there'll be some, if there should be some type of a contract with community action to administer mm -hmm. these funds and lay that out in writing, because typically when someone comes before us, we have a breakdown of all the funds. And with here, you're asking for a lump sum. 
So there really does need to be a contract where this is spelled out, not just in the um, grant that may come from CPA, because the CPA committee is no longer reviewing payments out of this fund. So we aren't looking at it saying, hey, you know, 85,000 has gone to grants, 15,000 has gone to administration. So unless someone is reviewing a contract on this, um, it should be, you know, it should be along that lines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Andy, you had a question? Go ahead. Um, yes, I spoke to Edwin briefly about this uh, idea of how to solve the conflict between the money being needed right away and the program details still needing to be worked out. And the solution that many towns are doing with CPA projects in general is to have a letter of agreement between the CPA committee and the party receiving the money. Uh, and that the money is, uh, the, the project is approved and approved at town meeting, but the money isn't released until the letter of agreement is signed by both parties. Uh, that would give uh, Dylan and Molly's committee uh, a chance to work out all these details uh, in between now and town meeting. Uh, and CPA isn't just signing off a blank check. Right. How would we, how would we accomplish that task? Uh, there'd be a CPA subcommittee who'd get together with their housing committee to work out the letter of agreement. Then there'd be another CPA meeting where the CPA would, uh, CPA committee would approve it. And then of course your committee would also have to approve it. Um, and it could lay out in detail, um, uh, I wrote, wrote out a bunch of questions, um, uh, just what all the money is going to be used for, what the application process is in detail, uh, who can receive the money and for what purpose, uh, what happens if there's more applicants than funds, what happens if there's fewer applicants and funds available. Um, how much it's going to cost, who's going to run it. All those details can be worked out. Uh, and then you can go to town meeting and say that they've been worked out without having to wait six months for the next funding cycle to continue. Right. Uh, ma many, many towns are doing that for all CPA projects. Yeah. And I, I agree with your thinking, Andy, but I'm looking at our time frame. And I don't see yeah. us having time to work out a letter of agreement between our committee and, uh, sorry, lose my, my names here, Molly and Dylan's committee for that. I mean, unless we have something that we can, um, as my one former boss used to say, do a literature search on <laughs> and take parts from something that exists, from some type of letter of agreement. Because well, that's, a, go ahead, Molly. I was just gonna say, we do have um, all of the paperwork that Sunderland has already executed. Um, and there is a letter of agreement in there, but I, you know, based on the types of questions you're asking tonight, we'd have to go back and review that okay. um, and see if that's something that we could leverage. Mm -hmm. Do you think that you have enough time between before the October town meeting to do that? You know, I hope so. I, I think to Dylan's point, you know, Claire Higgins was very clear that this is all coming at community action fast and it's not just Hadley. So there's definitely a sense of urgency on this for, for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, what I'm wondering is if we could kind of agree to proceed in good faith and make sure that all of the T's that need to be crossed, you know, for your committee, um, you know, we do the, the very best we can, but of course we're at the mercy of a third party as well, that worst case, then we wind up passing over it at a town meeting. 
if we're not able to get it together. Right. Uh, this may sound like a stupid question, but what's the difference between a contract and a letter of agreement? Aren't, don't, aren't they the same document? No, a contract uh, has much more force under law than a letter of agreement does. Letter of agreement would be that, and correct me if I didn't hear it right, letter of agreement would be that prior to releasing all of these, the funding, that there would have to be certain things that in theory the CPA agrees with the concept of this, but prior to releasing funds, certain kind of conditions would have to be met. And that would be part of the contract that you would put together. Okay, so what we're being asked to recommend, and again, I just wanna make sure I understand things, is we're being asked to recommend to town meeting, no, give them money and they'll work out the details later. Is that how, is that what you're asking for, Molly? Aren't we asking them to, to let us go into our coffers to loan them money if they meet our qualifications that we've stipulated in the letter of agreement? Mm -hmm. So that if the town votes to support it, yes, but then the housing committee doesn't meet our stipulated requirements in the letter of, of agreement, then that money just reverts back into our pot. Isn't that what we're talking about? Right. And a contract or all the I's are dotted and T's are crossed prior to town meeting. So the, the requirements, and I guess this is what I'm thinking of, the requirements, kind of our conditions, so to speak, have to be met prior to town meeting. Otherwise, as Molly said, it would be asked to be passed over. Is right, that right. It's, it, it, it's, not so, it's not so much that their committee has to meet your expectations, but that there has to be agreement between the two committees. Right. But the letter of agreement that we're looking at would be that there would have to be... Um, you know, all the details are worked out. There has to be an administrative agency. There has to be a cap on expenditure of funds. What percentage of funds, things like that. Right, I put some, uh, some possible points for discussion in the letter of agreement in the chat. Thank you, Andy. That's if that's helpful. helpful. Very helpful. Mm -hmm. um, what else does, um, Amy, what do you think about this? How, how should we proceed? I, I think that I like the concept of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I probably won't, I'll probably, I, I'm thinking I have to abstain because I am on the committee that is, that, that is requesting this money. Um, I feel though that the CPA probably, that's what this committee does is the housing. This is, this is what their focus is. So, CPA has the money and then they're going to hold the housing committee responsible to fulfill this. The housing committee will then take it and get another party. But this is, I like the fact of it not, we're not having to um, police it. We're not having, we're holding the housing authority um, responsible for it. And they, mm -hmm. they have to follow it. But I don't want to get, I don't want to have to know all the little, uh, little bits and, and details. Now, I liked the having a cap on it because we don't want it to be used by, you know, all administrative fees. That's fine. Um, I wouldn't want, it would make me nervous though because maybe at just 10%, if like Sunderland right now is over the 10%, I think when you calculated it. So what if it's 11%? I would not want this not to go if it was just a little bit over. And it's not just that they do marketing with it. They are actually the marketing, they'll go out to landlords and things like that nature. Now I'm very familiar with the um, community action. They, they've been in that Claire Higgins is uh, well known in, in the nonprofit that's um, when I dealt with Valley CDC, she's, she's been around and, and I've heard of her and, and, that, and that nonprofit for a while. They do a lot of good work. They do uh, help out. So I, I don't feel like it's a company or nonprofit that I'd be worried about 
uh, ripping us off. I, I really don't think that at all. I think that they're not, they're there to help the, these communities. So um, I, I'm very much in favor of this, but I want to make sure, you know, I, I and you want to put some things here, but we don't want to have to get too much details. I mean, let, let the housing group do the work. What do you Amy, think? I, what Amy, do you I, think? Go ahead. I think, um, I mean, I'm on the cemetery committee and I voted for those three projects. I don't think you have to not vote because you're on this committee. Um, okay. just, that's, the, that's the difference with the, this committee because like I represent Conservation Commission. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you, okay. you are allowed to vote. Um, Cassandra, yeah. what do you think about this? project how, how what do you think we should proceed I'm I'm getting a co consensus of the committee I, I agree I am in favor of this measure and I hear and agree with the concern about making sure people don't abuse their uh, uh, access to the money as administrators of who gets it but it sounds like there are uh, places and people that are already in mind for that who already have the trust of people on this committee. And I think it would be really a shame to not mm -hmm. put this through at this point when there probably are a lot of people in our town who, who could greatly benefit from these funds being made available. Mm -hmm. Denise, what do you think? I support this. I think that the administrative costs are just the cost of making a good thing happen. So. Mm -hmm. so I'm looking at what Andy put in the chat. And Molly and Dylan, have you been able to look at that? Yes. Mm -hmm. So do you have any issues? I mean, I like the outline of what's here. Yeah, nothing on this list is surprising it's all stuff that we're in communication with so i think we can nail it down it's just like molly said and like they're they're coming up against this program for the first time too uh yep. and so i'm just trying to nail it out with them and i appreciate your flexibility everyone here uh for being so willing to hear something that's not fully flushed out right um yep. so now molly you're uh on the application uh you it says funds requested 50,000 is that going to remain the same or you're asking for more money no um i i do think we should increase it to 100 based on okay. the discovery mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's better to have have it if you need it than you know if you don't need it it comes back to cpa anyways mm -hmm. and then one question i had um on this Will this have to go out to bid because it's $100,000 and it's a town? Um, I don't believe so because the, the, in theory, the town has the money. No, 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 Edwin, that's, that's not what I'm asking. direction it goes, that's all. If we could, because this money would be given to the Hadley Housing and Economic Development Committee, correct? Would it? Uh, no, it would. It would just be. Um, I believe at the treasurer's office, she would just set aside these funds. Right, but we have to grant this money to someone. Ah, okay. To like the cemetery committee, in theory, gets the money, but it's not. They're not going to touch the money. Oh, right, Paul, so, Paul, Paulette, that's right. That's correct. And then. So, uh, their it would committee have to go out to bid. spends it. Right. Well, it, de it depends on how much the administrative costs are. If right. the administrative costs are over the limit, then you might have to go out to bid. Right, but the contract is, well, true. But if the contract, that's the one thing we'd have to find out. The, the dollar amount's 100000 Depending mm -hmm. on the amount, the percent of that, that would be administration fee. Um, that would be something we would have to find out what, whether or not you have to go out to bid on it. And you really don't know what it'll be because you don't know how much of that 100000 will even be. Um, well, when, typically when you go out with a contract, you say administration fees will not exceed X dollars, uh, X amount. And when they hit that, 
they either, it's like Pioneer Valley planning. We do contracts with them all the time and they charge us as if they're writing something brand new. <laughs> but I know, and we know just from this committee that when you get something from them, a lot of times there's other community names in there because they are recycling mm -hmm. um, other things and tweaking it for the community. So they are not necessarily putting in that much money, that much time and effort into something. So that's where you would put a, a, an expenditure cap on there. Mm -hmm. And that would be part of what would get worked out. And I think the other um, thing, Paulette, too, is that what we're asking them to do, um, they're pretty unique qualifications. Yep. And Valley CDC already said that they weren't able to do it as well as the Franklin um, Redevelopment Authority. Okay. So our, our population is immediately limited. <laughs> okay. So I think that would help with this um, bid issue as well. Okay. And that would just be, you know, those are the kind of the boxes that have to get checked off with this because as I said, the money would go to the Hadley Housing and Economic Development Committee. That's who is the grantee of the money. Mm -hmm. And then you are going to distribute that money either 100% to um, community action and with caveats that certain amount of money has to be used for residents of Hadley and a certain amount of money can be used for um, admin fees. Mm -hmm. Okay. And th that's why I suggested the letter of agreement idea. Even if you can't answer all these questions by town meeting, you can say to the town meeting, we're working on it and the money won't be used until the letter of agreement is signed and the CPA committee is satisfied. Mm -hmm. And that way you can make sure that the money can get to the people who need it as soon as possible. Because right. I'm afraid that if you don't have answers to these questions, town meeting right. won't approve it. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, and that's, that's one of the questions that can we send this to town meeting without something finalized? That's, I guess, how do we do that? We have never done this before. So I'm kind of. Yeah. No, I don't think anyone has. This is all new ground, but what I thought I, was hearing Andy say was that other towns have gotten this through with letter of agreement. Did you say that some well, of the towns have? Many, many towns, ones who have professional planners and lawyers and that kind of things, sign letter of agreements with all CPA money recipient, uh, recipients, no matter what the project is. Mm -hmm. You know, that way the, the details are all spelled out and everybody knows what's happening. Yeah, we haven't and done I that like here in Hadley, but it might work in this case. On, on select board, um, you know, we granted provisional licenses all the time. So I think that letter of agreement idea is similar to that. So for example, we might say to somebody, okay, we'll go ahead, um, you know, and give you a license, whether, whatever it is, you know, a liquor license or your marijuana license, but it's contingent upon sign off from the police chief, fire chief and whomever. Um, and then we're done at that point. But as you said, like the, the license wouldn't move until all of that had been signed off on the other parties. Okay. And I'm, I can't remember the, I know there was one warrant article within the past four or five years where there was a condition put on town meeting and town meeting approved it contingent on a future event. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what that was. It might've been even like the sale of North Hadley Hall or something like that, God help us, but. Hmm. Uh, so Mary had a question, um, and I'll let you answer it. I, I know what I think the answer is. Who the money is paid to, the landlord or the tenant, my thought it always goes to the tenant. I think no, it, go, it always goes to the goes landlord. To the landlord. Okay. okay. To the landlord. That's what we what discussed last week. What if you're a single week. family, what if you own the house, it goes to the bank? No, it's only for renters. It's only for renters. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that you want, the hope is that they won't be 
kicked out of the house. So they might be tempted right. to keep the money and not use it for rent if, and then they'll mm -hmm. have that hanging over their head. So. Right, we don't want them taking it to the dispensary. Right. Does, does anyone else on the committee own rental property in Hadley? That could be a conflict of interest, so that's not an issue? Okay, that's good. Um, yeah, so Mary, because it does go to the landlord and you are a potential landlord, you should abstain. Okay, all right. So. Um, and Paulette, we did mention last week, I'm not sure if I put it in the minutes, but we are stipulating that the renters, the property that's being rented is in Hadley. The landlord may not in fact live in Hadley anymore. So the money might be going out of Hadley, but it's keeping right. Hadley residents. So just, just to be clear. Yeah, and Ed, and Edwin didn't mention last week. I, I agreed, but I didn't say it then that there be a requirement that it a Hadley resident for some period of time already, so that it's not attracting people to come to Hadley and then apply for the funds. Yes, right, yes. right. Well, the definition of what a Hadley resident is is something that your committee is going to have to work out, yeah. whether it's a registered voter or receiving mm -hmm. right. utility bills or uh, you know whatever you decide. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what does the committee feel? Should we, do, do they feel that we should recommend this with uh, caveats that a uh, uh, letter of agreement be generated? Or uh, how does, how should we proceed now? I would, I would put forth a motion to approve this with that caveat. Okay. Yeah. I'm not sure who's going to generate that. Do we need a subcommittee to generate that? Well, the CPA has to approve it, the letter. So it's always better to have a couple people work on it and then bring it to the, the full board instead of trying to hash it out with, you know, nine minds trying to come to an agreement. Well, then that brings a, a point that do we have enough time to do that? before the before the special town it, meeting it, it doesn't necessarily have to be before town meeting i think it would be better if it was but it doesn't have to be so the letter of agreement um would stipulate that certain things had to be met prior to um fund any funding being transferred right right exactly so it's just like Edwin, if someone doesn't have, submit a bill, they don't get the money. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so. I understand that, I get it. I know, and um, I just wanna know if I'm gonna support this article or not, I just wanna know how I stand on it. I just wanna make sure that the taxpayers of the town of Hadley, whose money that we're recommending be spent, know what's going on too, mm -hmm. that's all. Um, well, I think if we, you know, require the letter of agreement. Um, okay. Do you want to make a motion? Sure. I will move to approve or recommend $100,000 come out of the general, would this come out of housing or general fund? Housing. Right. housing. housing. Got to get some money out of there. Yep. <laughs> and housing has what's the dollar amount? Two hundred thousand two or something. Hundred eighty eight thousand three hundred thirty nine dollars. So, so a hundred thousand come out of the housing set aside fund. Two hundred eighty eight thousand three thirty nine forty six. Yeah. Right. Okay. So that hundred thousand come out um, with the stipulation that prior to expenditure or transfer of funds, a letter of agreement is um, signed by both parties with the, the items as the issues as outlined in Andy's, in our chat here, which is eligibility requirements, administration, process, and oversight. Those are the four main things. Mm -hmm. So just with, with stipulation. Um, yes. 
Good. Um, is that your motion? Yes. Do I have a second on that? Second. Okay. We have a can motion. I say, by... Could I, could I, could I uh, ask, ask a question, even though I'm not a member? Sure, why not? Go ahead. Are you going to put a time limit on this? On the, oh. Two years. Well, do we want a, do we want a longer time limit? or a shorter time limit? I would keep it the same uh, because, and then they could be, if we need longer, we'll have a, an extension put on. Yep. Right, I understand that. If, it's, if, they, if there's not enough time, the individual or the uh, organization can ask for an extension. Do we wanna put, a, instead of a two year time limit, which seems exceedingly long for a project like this, how do we know that they're, they're just not going to say, oh, well, we got two years to spend this money, so we'll take our time and we'll drag our feet. If we put like a six-month limit or until the next town meeting, an eight-month or 10-month, whatever it is, then they can't drag their feet and take their time drawing up this letter of an agreement and getting the money to the people that need it. Well, because this is being applied for for COVID, Mm -hmm. it's kind of time is of the essence. So I would say, you know, I would say stick with the two year, but you know, they're going to have to prove that the money is being spent for the, what the project is being put forth, which is mm -hmm. for COVID. Mm -hmm. rental, rental Mark, assistance. Couldn't we also say two years here on the article, but then as we dig more into this, we could put into the letter of agreement a tighter time frame, yeah. if if that comes to. I no, would say no, that no. To the we... town, the town meeting article is the law, and you're supposed to do okay. Okay. What, what it says. The, uh, you know, a shorter time frame gives the applicant motivation to get moving. Um, and God forbid, COVID should be here two years from now. Right. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, hoping it's not. But, you know, I think either way would be okay. I mean, shortest time frame I would recommend is a year from town meeting, but I don't have an issue with two years. Because if, it, if it's not going to be expended for COVID, then they it don't have to wait the two years for that money to come back to us. Right, right, right. Right, if, and if it's not gonna be expended to an individual who's renting, whose income was affected by COVID-19, then they wouldn't get the money. Right. 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 So yeah. if a vaccine comes out and life goes back to normal, um, you know, next summer, by the end, by a year from now, um, it may not be anything that is necessary. Well, do we just want to put in the letter of agreement to, to the next special town meeting? That's uh, a little more than a year, you know, a year and a, it's like 13 months. Do we just want to say that? Or do we just want to say the, the date of the next uh, town meeting or special town meeting or whatever? We usually say one year or two years from the date of the vote. Right. Okay. So that's, that's how it's always been worded is expended two years from the date of the vote. So. Okay. Well, how does do the rest of the committee feel okay with that? I, I'm worried that if you say just the one year and it happens, I mean, heck, I, I thought the kids were only going to be out of school for like uh, one month. And mm -hmm. this is just dragged on and on and on. So if you just say one year and, and next fall, they just don't have it out to everybody. It ha it's not the community's not back to where it needs to be. And we need a little longer. We, our hands are tied because of town meeting. I, I almost rather go with just a little bit longer and then they give it back earlier. So, I mean, I don't want to, wouldn't want to go more than two years, but uh, you know, I'm a little worried about one year not being enough. Yeah. 
I, I like the two years because that kind of keeps us consistent. Yeah. And knowing that if everything does go back to normal and there are no more uh, issues with COVID and renting, then that money would then come back. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is, uh, do you want to restate your motion again? <laughs> or did somebody made, make a motion or whatever? Okay, so I moved to approve or recommend to town meeting $100,000 for the Hadley Housing and Economic Development Committee with the conditions that we create a letter of agreement prior to any funds being dispersed that addresses eligibility requirements for applicants, administration of funds, the process for giving funds, and the town board or department that would have oversight. Okay. Don't ask me to say it again. No, I'm not gonna. And that uh, that was your motion, and it was seconded by Amy. Is that correct? Yeah. Oh, did you did you say a two year limit on the spending? With yes. Okay. Was, yeah. Edwin, do you know how to use the chat function in Zoom? No. <laughs> okay, because okay, it's in so there. Okay, so at the bottom of your screen, Edwin. Yeah. If you bring your cursor down, if you bring it down towards the bottom, all these little things pop up below yep. the bottom row of people. Yeah, I see chat. If you click on chat, yeah, all of a sudden a bunch of what I was reading from will come up on the side. Okay. Are, are there any other suggestions for uh, issues in the letter of agreement besides what I've written? I think, I think those four categories are great and encompass everything that I could think of. Yeah. The, the categories, maybe a little detail would be added under right. one of them, but. Right. They look good. Yeah, just to give you guys a roadmap on to how to proceed. Right. And I would be willing if Molly's got a copy or Dylan has a copy of a similar letter of agreement to work with them to hash stuff out for Hadley. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna ask you to repeat it. So we have uh, a motion in a second. Yes, I do. So, okay, all those in favor of the motion with the stipulations for the CPA application or for the Hadley Emergency Rental Assistance for COVID-19 signified by saying aye or raising your hand, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, yes. One abstain. No, two abstain. I am two. Who abstained? Mary and Edwin. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we beat that to death. So um, what should we do about the Hadley Common Landscape Project? Thank you, Molly and Dylan. For I'm just gonna say thank you guys. Yeah, thank, thank you so much for your support. We do appreciate it. Yeah. Well, it's a really important project and we're glad that you guys picked up on it. Yeah, yeah. Very glad, yeah. How do, now, we, how do we proceed with the Hadley Common Landscape Concept Study? Now, I was looking through all of my emails, and I didn't see that project in there. So he, he presented it at last week. I think it okay. came in on the 10th with Amy's. Um... Which one? Because I've got them all right here in front of me. I thought it did. I've got Hadley Emergency Rental, Russellville Cemetery, Gravestone Assessment, and Hockenham. No. But I, I don't got, see one. I've got, I've got it came in uh, 
at what time? I can't tell. Well, I'll, I'll, I can forward it to you right now. Okay. Yeah, it was one right before the emergency. Right. 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 Like that with the okay, so I have right before that is the Russellville one. Was it in with that? No, no, no it was separate. It should be in your inbox now. I just resent it. Okay, let me look because that was the only one I couldn't find. I had everything else. Now I'm surprised Chris is not here. I clearly <laughs> stated, uh, and that's why Molly and Dylan uh, knew that to come. I, I clearly stated to everyone to come to both meetings and to um, present this at town meeting. Okay, so, so what do we do? What is the, what should we do? I, I think- do we, have, do we have questions? I mean, he did go over this last week. I, I actually have some questions, I guess, but um, he did go over this last week. He did, he did try to do this in the, in the fall and um, didn't make our meeting, so we passed over it. So this is his second second try. Hmm. Or he did it in the spring, rather. He tried to do it in the spring and, and missed the meeting, and we passed over it. So this he presented it last week. Um, I don't know why he's not here today. Well, what, what exactly are they looking to do at Town Hall? I'm looking at this. Not at Town Hall. What, what he wants to do compared uh, for what he explained it last week, he wants to do a concept study about what should be done about the Hadley Common, not, not Town Hall. Right. Uh, but as far as what? Uh, he wants to hire a prominent school. landscape right. designer to look at ways to uh, make, restore it, protect it, and I think he said adapt it for our changing needs. And I think yeah. he was talking about different festivals and events that we have and it gets kind of beat up. Mm -hmm. And there was some talk about underground ut utilities mm -hmm. uh, and possibly addressing parking, but that was kind of a big barrel that I'm not sure anyone wanted to open. It's that like that was my question. He also talked about, it has on here, enlargement plan of Route 9 intersection. So I think that's part of it as well. He even talked about parking meters, which I was wondering where people would know, uh, where yeah. they would pay to park and then walk to from there. But um, yeah, no. parking meters, wait a minute, on Route 9? No, on um, the common for generating funds to take care of it. No. To, to mm -hmm. You're yeah. going to... Hey, this is for just a study. You're not going to make money. Do a, a concept study about what to do with the town common. Basically, if in a, as few words as possible in a nutshell, right. that's what he is. But I'm trying to figure out what, what is it falling under which category? That, so general. It would no, 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 no. Under, is it historic? Because I'm looking at there's historic, but there's no funds left in historic. And no, I'm, I'm asking what category it falls under. Okay. Is it open space? Oh, Is it recreation? Is it historical? I don't really see. I mean, it, it doesn't really historic. qualify as historical. No, I think there was a note about it not qualifying last week uh, for historical because the common would have already have to be identified as historical, which it's not, right. I believe is what Andy brought up. Mm -hmm. Right, right. I, I believe it would be uh, uh, under recreation. Oh, I'm muted. No, I'm not You're muted. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, but the 30,000 is to hire a landscape architect even to, to come up with a plan right uh, and then you know you can approve the plan or ask for changes or and he's got some really creative ideas uh, some of which are admittedly controversial um, but he laid out there's going to be public meetings and a whole process and when people come down on the parking meter idea I'm sure he'll get rid of it but I'm I'm looking at the concept design deliverables a kickoff meeting with the DPW director mm -hmm. two meetings with the select board mm -hmm. two conference calls with DPW director 
one site analysis diagram mm -hmm. and then a site plan with one enlargement plan of Route 9 intersection and three perspective renderings. Where does it say that there's any public input? I think it's the meetings. The meetings with the select board is not a public meeting. That's very different. Uh, well, what, what, back when I was chair, I yeah. did tell him that I would have demanded a public meeting. He thought yeah. the meetings with the select board was enough. But you guys can put in, you know, there has to be a public meeting. Yes. Yeah, see, I, usually when you're talking about something this iconic in a community, you wanted some type of like, and I hate to use the words, like a design charrette where you actually have people come and say, if you had your druthers about what happened at, um, on the common, these are the things that you would like. I don't wanna spend $30,000 and not have the public's um, input. Right. Put it into the, uh, the warrant article as a condition. So, you guys can do that. Yeah, why not? And unfortunately, he's not here, but maybe where he put in meetings with the select board, maybe he meant that the select board runs it. You know, it's under their auspices, but maybe that is a public meeting. Maybe he didn't mean it was actually one of their Wednesday night That's, select board meetings. I, I, think, I think he did. Yeah. Good. When, I, when I spoke to him about this, you know, he said, why do we need a public meeting? Uh, Anyone can come to the select board. And I said, no, no one will go to the select board, but everyone will come to the public meeting. Right. And if this is not done with public input, he'll be run out of town, plain and simple. It won't be the guy who's doing the design. It'll be the messenger, which will be Chris. Because people will get so, excuse my French, pissed off about the fact that all these things are moved, you know, you're, what do you mean you're doing this? We didn't want this, we don't want that. You know, I, I just know that when you've got an iconic area, you know, a landmark, what is done with it is gonna be, I mean, just the fact that people sit there on the parades, you know, for, the Memorial Day Parade and, you know, vehicles and parade floats and everything else go up there. Um, this is, this is a, this is a big deal. And just to have someone say, okay, let's do this. I'm going to give you 30 grand and you come up with a design with no public input. So, I would not be in favor of this unless there was specific public meetings not in, not to constitute not constituting the select board meeting. Well, it does say on the application we will meet twice with the select board. First right. to present initial ideas and sketches for feedback and second to present final materials. Right. Well, your your committee can make any Your committee can make any changes to the proposal you want. Right. Doesn't there's matter a, what the proposal says. It only matters what you decide. Right. There's a phone number here. Do you, do you know if that's his cell phone? Should we call and see if he can join us? Because I think that's a very good point. I absolutely recommend public um, input. Well, but it's nice to have him. Can we just add that without, sounds like we can add that, that we need public input for the study. I don't know if that changes the price of the study. It will change the price because if you're going to have some type of a public forum, you need to be able to have a place and you need to have people to work with you. Um, you know, you start talking about in Hadley that something's going to happen on the common, then you're going to have people showing up in droves. The fact when the, the, uh, little beer fest was going on at the common. I heard so many people make comments about that also. I, I thought it was wonderful. <laughs> I mean, I, right, but then people are like, well, wait a minute, how come they can go there and do that and put up a structure? 
I want to I want to comment a, a little bit on the whole process. One, I'm very very disappointed that Chris is not here when when I explained how important it was. Number two, right. I Paulette's concerns are very very real to me. I do think that's a problem. I have not just let's talk about Route Nine widening project. That project had been submitted to the DPW. He sat on it for the longest time. It never went, to, we didn't get much public input whatsoever. And that design's almost done and getting pushed through. And it didn't, I don't believe it, that he submitted it to planning board. I don't believe he submitted it to anyone else. And so that's on that project. We also, there was a, um, the DPW was also granted a study before um, for their trailers. And I don't believe that's been done. So I'm just not pleased at this point of the studies that's been done and, and answering the questions to the how we've asked for questions. And it's not just this committee. I mean, I've been dealing with other committees and asking about questions and I'm not getting the response back that I expect to get back. So I would be very, at, at this point, my feeling was is you can't give us the I want something to happen to the common. I think the study would be good, but I don't think that um, I have big concerns like Paulette said that it's not gonna happen to what we're gonna spend money and it's, we're not gonna get what we want out of it. Okay, do we wanna pass over this one? What does the committee feel? Do we, do we wanna try to call them real fast or not? Um, no. Oh. Here's, here's the issue we've got, and, and I agree that things do need to be done to the town common. However, looking at his proposal, it's very specific. Mm -hmm. And the two meetings with the select board, I've looked at a lot of these design proposals, and two meetings with the select board are basically saying, okay, select board, here are my ideas, you how many select board are there? Five. 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 You five people speak for the town. Isn't that why we elected them? Uh, no, not in design stuff like that. They are like the town administrators. They are not the BL. It's just like the planning board doing an open space plan because it's under their purview and saying, we're elected we're going to do what we want. We're not going to get any public input because we know best. Mark? So that's, that's the idea of when you're doing a design of something that's so out there and has so many different, um, you know, tugs at so many different areas of the town, you really need to have input on this. Mark? I definitely hear Amy and Paulette. Um, I was thinking in the spirit of community, what if we recommend it as we want it? Say 30,000 and it's gonna have, you know, well, I don't know that it needs to list all the deliverables in the article, but we tell him that it, it, it has to have public input. And if he wants to say, well, I can't do it for that, and he wants to have it passed over, then fine. But we've said, look, you didn't show up. We put it forward with our stipulations. You can take it or you can pass over and go until next in six more months. Yeah, we can, we can make a proposal. We have to recommend a proposal as presented. No, no, Edwin. No, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, Andy. If we put in as stipulations, you got to have two public meetings. Then, then we can, just like Mark said, we'll leave it up to Chris to say, listen, I can't do it for that. I'm going to, uh, oh, we're going to okay. table this motion. I'm, I'm sorry, I misunderstood you. No, you know, that's what I would see. I can see everybody's argument. I can see having this project and not having public input is really dangerous because you're relying, you got 5,200 people in town relying on the say-so of five people, which is dangerous. 
And I, I think something needs to be done to the common. I, I haven't been down there. And I think in summer I was down the common maybe twice because I don't want to go anywhere. And so um, I think we, 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 if we're going to propose this to town meeting, let's put our own stipulations on it and recommend that the money is uh, 30, $30,000 and where, where does it come from? And that's it. We'll leave and we'll give it back to Chris and let him deal with it. What does the committee feel? You know, if, if he wants to meet twice with the DPW director and two meetings with the select board and um, do we, where do we want to put our uh, meeting? Do you want to put one meeting with the people between the uh, kickoff meeting with the DPW director and then, then have citizens of the town of Hadley and then two meetings with the select board and citizens with the town of Hadley and two phone conferences and stuff? I don't know. I, I, this is, this is one thing I would lose and sleep over. So I don't know what to do about this. If we want to put our own stipulations in it, let's do it and move on. And that's it. If we don't. So, so Edwin, I guess one question I have, because I don't have the, I know you worked on the open space committee. Did the open space plan address the town common? No, it did not. Okay. It just made mention of it and that was it. So it just said something should be done about it. So okay. Now one, can, one thought I had is because it says enlargement plan of Route 9, I mean, I'd, I'd hope that this study would really look at the whole common, not just kind of how to make the best way to make the road Route 9 a little bigger or a turning lane. You know, that, right, well, didn't, uh, well, that, is, that is what he said yeah. last week, uh, ju but just to be clear, you can't use CPA money to widen Route 9. No. No, <laughs> obviously. Route 9 already done. That's right. done anyway. Yeah, Route 9 was already done by the town common anyway. Yeah. We're, we're beyond no, that. It's, it's, yeah. Half a mile beyond that. But he right. says in here an enlargement plan of Route 9. I think what he said verbally was that he wanted them to look at making it safer to cross Route 9. So I don't right. know. He did, he did say that. Which is, that might be okay. That's valuable. I don't know. Well, I, I, I'm hearing that there, we have an awful lot of questions. So what, what's, what is the committee's feeling? One, 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 one last quick comment, if I may. Um, this is the chance to get the work on the town common started. And if your committee decides not to fund the study, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. And it won't happen. <laughs> so just bear that in mind. You don't right. think it would happen again in the spring? I don't think so. It would be Chris's third time presenting it. But I he hasn't it, He hasn't fully presented it each No, time. No, but um, I just don't, I think he'd take it as a as no as a, the answer and that he wouldn't present it again. But why Why is he the one always present? Well, why is it not just the select board bring it up? Why, why is it even under DPW? Uh, I, I, you know, why doesn't the select board do anything? I don't know, but okay. um, so, this is this is the this is the person who took it upon themselves to get it started, right? And there may not be anyone else. And I understand that, Andy. And but I'm looking at this is design services, and it's they may be a great firm, but they're out of Boston mm -hmm. and Cambridge. They actually sounded really exciting to be doing this. They they sounded really top notch. I, they had done quite. They a always job. sound top notch. Yeah. Sorry, I I worked as a planner for twenty five years, so I had lots of proposals coming in in front of me, and everyone always had their game face on. So, Where did they, they gave of, some examples of what they had done, and I I can't remember. I don't know if anyone else did, but it was like wow, that would be. But would that wow fit in Hadley? Well, if they present if they present the plan and no one likes it, right? It, they, the funds to uh, execute the plan won't be forthcoming, and that'll be the end of it. 
Right. We will have paid thirty thousand dollars to have a plan that we don't like. Right. Oh, but but I don't think that's going to happen. I think if you demand public yeah. input, they yeah. will produce a plan that'll pass. I would suggest the public input be after the initial meeting with the DPW director. I think you know. I, I would I would have the select board be the at the end of that. You know, after so, two meetings and here is. And, and I know, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, this is just one of the things. I understand that this, Chris wants to do something with the town common and that mm -hmm. he has been one person who has put forth this. But in a sense, if you have a kickoff meeting, you tend to want to have um, not just a one person kickoff meeting. You want to have parties of interest. Usually when you have a kickoff meeting, it's not a one on one because this isn't Chris's project. This is a town project. There should be someone from select board. There should be someone from, you know, maybe even police because they're looking at traffic and things like that someone from the planning board. Kickoff meetings typically are- Parks and Rec. Well, Park and Rec, yeah. All parties of interest typically are represented in a kickoff meeting. Okay. Can we stipulate that as well? Yeah, why not? Well, because this is their, I'm looking at this, this is his um, proposal. This is from the landscape architect. This is his quote for the work. Mm -hmm. He's going to do $30,000 with these one, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight, nine, ten different things on it. Now we start adding things. He's not going to do it for $30,000. Right. You know, what? You, you know, the cemetery committee put in funds. I know the CPA usually likes, whatever organization is promoting it to put in, do you think if it goes a couple grand higher that the DPW could do that? They don't have the money unless they take it out. They, I don't think they have a, a line item for something like this. I don't know. The, an, the answer, Mary, is I couldn't give you an answer. Isn't there, really doesn't he answer. have to go through designer s selection? So he can't just hand it to them anyway? Doesn't he have to... I mean, well, to bid. with municipal funding, so he's going to have to, you know, he's hoping to get them as a designer and, but. Yeah, what, what, one, way, one way to look at this is that he's, he's got, he got a quote from a landscape architect. He said, he said, this is what it'll cost to do this and this and this. Right. But when he gets the money, um, he's going to have to go, it's over $10,000. I think he has to go out to a bid or to go through the procurement process and you start from scratch and you say, here's, here's the scope of work, you know, and go out to two or three different landscape architects. And, you know, I think that he must, he must have the flexibility to change the scope of work a bit uh, before it hits the street. Um, just, you know, I think that's sort of the way we, we did it in the cemetery committee. We and that's why the bids sometimes come in less than what's asked for because you're yeah. given an estimate and then when you actually get the bid, if it's lower, it's lower. And you, also, and you can also stipulate in the bid, when you go out to bid, certain things as alternates. So you could say, there's got to be a public hearing. There's got to be, um, you know, whatever. And if the bids come in high, then you, you can knock things out or you can go find more money. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what we did with the library. We didn't do a, a metal roof because we didn't have the money, but it was, but we went out to bid for it and it was an alternate. It wasn't part of the base bid. So there's different ways of slicing it. I'm sure uh, the town administrators, they do this all the time. They'll be able to advise how the proper procurement process should be. And I think that there's usually enough flexibility. In, um, well, I'm, I know there are two different levels. One is for design services um, and one is for actual construction. So right. there's two different, I think with design services, you it's, up to a certain amount and it's probably 30,000 because right. that's below where they have to go out and do competitive bidding. Right, but they still have to get quotes, I think. I don't think they can just pick somebody. Um, well, I, I could be wrong. 
Mm. Let, let me put it this way. I worked in municipal government enough to know that there are ways to get whoever you want. Mm -hmm. So, and it's legal. Just well, say that. I would put forth a motion and you may not support it, but I would put forth with hope that we could get something that we will all like. I would put forth a motion to recommend the $30,000 come out of the, was it open space? And with the stipulations that the designer would have a kickoff meeting with the DPW and the, and representatives from the other boards or committees that we stipulate and we could add that after tonight, I don't know. And that there be at least two public meetings. And then it's, 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 it's an article, it's there. And if he says it's my way or the highway, then we pass over it. But I think for the betterment of the community, and I'm hopeful that he would work with us and the town. I don't think it's his intent to make this his thumbprint. I'm, this is all not part of the motion, I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, so anyway, that's my motion. And for two years and return the unexpended, or one year and return unexpended funds and all of the boilerplate. And I guess that would open it for discussion, if there's a second. Okay, uh, first of all, do we have a second to Mark's motion? I'll second it. Okay, Mary, now we can discuss it, <laughs> technically. <laughs> but, you know, the way I see it, we have to recommend a specific proposal to town me, uh, to, to, the way this is written, we have to recommend it to the DPW, don't we? And they well, are we would the to DPW the, would be administering the funds, so to speak. We right. would be giving the funds to the DPW. Right. And so whatever whatever we say as a motion is what's going to be on the town meeting warrant. Correct? Correct. Okay, so if if Mr. Okafor doesn't like how it's worded, he can say let's pass over it. Yeah, so I just looked up, and I'm looking at it now, that when either the estimated design fee is less than 30000 so that's where the number came from, mm -hmm. or the construction cost is less than 300000 jurisdictions are not subject to designer selection law. This, so, is, not, this is not under 30000 it's 30, Well, they'll come in at twenty nine ninety nine. Okay. what they'll do in order to get this project. Just because we give Chris or we're authorizing 30,000, if this company comes in at 29.99, then okay. they would, he would be able to do it. Good. And I'm thinking back to when you, we did the projects for the design work for Hopkins, that, came in and it kept growing and growing based on things that were seen. Anybody remember that? For the, for the playing field? Yep. Yeah, I got, I, I got offered the, the irrigation system because the school committee doesn't want to use it. Yeah. So, um, doesn't, I don't know. Uh, first of all, Mark presented a motion. Is there a second to it? It was seconded uh, so that we could discuss it. Do we want to beat this to death anymore or what do we want to do? What's the committee's feeling? I think I'll, I'll just say my piece and I'll be quiet, you believe promise? it or not. Um, <laughs> shh, Edwin. <laughs> I believe that before we go out to bid or we go out for design services, we really need to know what we are looking to design, not have someone come up with a plan and say, ta-da, here's what I think you should do. 
I think we need public input as to what we need or want on the common. And then that information goes out with a design service. So. I'm I'm, 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 I like the concept. So as long as we have the stipulations that Mark listed, I'd be fine with it. Did anybody write down the stipulations? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you mean two public meetings and I could send them to you tomorrow. How's that? Well, um, then, then we're not all, yeah, then it's not in a public meeting. Sorry. Yeah, that's not a public meeting. Uh, so Can you um, type them in the chat. I'm, um, I'm looking at their website right now, Stimson, and they did Pulaski Park in Northampton. That was one of the ones you mentioned. And they've done several at UMass um, in the area also that are beautiful. And then Williams College and a lot, I just don't know, but. Um. I believe Mark said that, um, that the, besides the boilerplate, that the money be released to DPW on the condition that there be two public meetings. And that the uh, kickoff meeting included representatives from the following boards but, or committees, right? But, or all interested parties. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, there's a motion in a second. Excuse me? We, there is a motion in a second, so. Yep, so we uh, got a vote on it. Should I'll we just say vote. interested parties or should we try to list who we think is interested? You should list like planning board, select board, historical yeah. parks and recreation. Parks and rec. You writing this down, Edwin? Oh, hell no. <laughs> Mark is. You, yeah. Historical Commission, I'm sure, wants to. Right. Yep. I'm not sure if that is floodway or floodplain up that far for conservation. South, South so, part is. And it's me. Right. Park. I it during the day, I can't be there. So you said right. police, which I think is good too. Right. Mm -hmm. Because so, they're talking about traffic. Park and Rec, Planning Board, Police. Historical Commission. Yeah, historical. historical Commission. Yeah, that. Select board, mm -hmm. park and rec, I think we set them all. Yeah. And the money would come out of rec, recreation? Open spaces, I think we... Yeah, open space recreation. Recreation, right. Maybe agricultural, just because there's a few farms off of the common. Okay, uh, commission. Good suggestion. I, I think a lot of the houses along the common would feel they're interested parties. Um, yes, they so would. They'll be, but they'll that be would be public meeting parties. Typically, are board like town interests, okay. and then when they have the public meeting, that's when you invite everyone who lives around the common. Or works. Good. Do you, Do you want to stipulate when the public meetings would be? Like one before the proposal is finished and one after to present it or something like that? Two, two public meetings at uh, what, 10% and 30% of the study okay. or something like that? Yeah. Sure. That's, I guess I'd like to have Chris's input in that a little bit because. That, that is pretty standard. Okay. Yeah. 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 But, but I mean, know. I mean, in terms of the ten and thirty percent, not right, right. I think the two meetings is very important. Right, and I I got comments from you know, what do you? How can you want to improve the common and make people drive faster down it? Well, so, pe we people, need. right? People will get a chance to bitch about it at the public meetings. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I know. I'm just that's not sure. information. Yeah. That's all. Right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Do you feel like repeating that or you don't think you could, Mark, so that we know what we're voting on? Um, yeah, I would move that we recommend to, uh, is it a, appropriate, uh, $30,000 from the open space rec set aside mm -hmm. for the DPW to 
uh, undertake a landscape de design study for uh, improvements and restoration of the town common. This study would include a kickoff meeting with the DPW, comma, Parks and Rec, comma, Planning Board, Historical Commission, Police Department, Select Board, and was there an Ag Committee that I heard? Yeah, how about if we just put at least these? Um, what, which would include representatives from at least yes. the following right. boards and, and departments. Right. Um, and uh, it would have two public meetings um, for, uh, there would be two public meetings for uh, public input at the 10% and 30% stages of the study. Sure. I mean, you don't want public input at 80% because you're right. You're just around the corner. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. How do people feel about Mark's motion? No problem. Now the motion um, that he makes, that's not what we're putting exactly on the article. Correct. Right. It, that's gonna, quite lengthy. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be, it's going to be put in legalese. Yeah. And it's going to be a little bit tighter than what uh, Mr. Okafor presented last week. That's all. Would, would we put that on the application? Is that where you would put it, that that's the conditions? Um, well, the he, conditions just, he didn't use a regular application. He just used a couple pieces of paper. Okay. Could we just say similar to what we just did with uh, Molly's, uh, say, um, with to the letter of agreement, and do the same thing? Letter of agreement with the DPW? Yeah, and do the same thing. I either that or just put it in the in the war warrant motion. Yeah, it's not it's not that long. No, no, the planning board has much longer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're gonna get a. We're gonna have you know, like t twenty pages of definitions in one oh, one article. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. then, then he should have been. Then he should have come to the meeting. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's no. Uh, we're we're doing him a favor, and my right. intent is that we're doing the town a favor. And it, if it's not to his liking, he can pass, and then it's on him. But we right. didn't. We actually look good here because he didn't show up and we're going the extra mile for the town, and you're but we're protecting our, yeah. our interests. Yes. Yeah, so no. to answer Amy's question, yes, this is how it'll show up on the warrant. Yep. I do agree. I think I, I also think everyone has agreed they want something done there. And I think it's kind of an issue of where to start that ball rolling. But if we do this and, you know, keep things moving, from the position that we can. If he can't do it, then someone else will have to pick it up. But it's not us that stopped any progress from being made. Right, and just right. a reminder, it's just a study. No shovel will lift dirt right. from this right. money. This is just a study. So and, that's part of and then even uh, if, if this study is done and the town doesn't improve it and puts it on a shelf somewhere, that's it. It just costs us thirty thousand dollars that we already have, that we just spending. But my my concern is that it's taxpayers' money, and I want to spend it correctly. That's all. It's, it's not like that's never happened before in Hadley, though. You know. Nah, no comment. We want to break that cycle, Andy. We want to break that cycle. Okay. But that's why it goes to town meeting. If they don't want right. it, you know, he's going to have to sell it. Right. Right. You know, yeah. it's on him. He had said it would take three or four years to implement whatever got done too. It's not like he's going to go out and do all this stuff immediately. Um, mm -hmm. It does get yep. approved. And if, and if he came back to CPA for funding for the implementation, then the town votes on it again. So it's, it's um, 
and yeah. and it could say at the at at the warrant that the you know for example that the CPA committee supports it four to three you know yeah. that would show them that he's got to sell it you know oh yeah well he has to sell it anyway we're just an advisory committee right and it, and if he doesn't do what you want him to do in regards to the study then you just turn him down mm -hmm. you know for the next step. Like, how can we trust you this time if you didn't do what you were supposed to do the last time? That's right. That's well, right. He's not going to get the money if he doesn't do what we've asked him to do. Right. Well, again, you know, this is Hadley, so sometimes. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah. So we have a motion that Mark made, and it was seconded. Um, anybody else have any comments? Good. <laughs> um, and uh, call for a vote and say everybody in favor of Mark's motion to recommend this Hadley Common lawn, Landscape Concept Study to the town meeting signify by raising their hand. One, two, three, four, five, yes. Uh, I'm gonna vote no. Me too. And Paulette is going to vote now. Did I read that right? Yep. And I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad you did. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I, I don't think we should send this through mm -hmm. seven to zero because it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it, 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 it's not clean. No, it isn't. Can I, can I ask, can I ask a, a clarifying question? Yeah. Sometimes at town meeting, people will ask, why did two people vote no? Usually the committee doesn't speak to particular issues mm -hmm. um, but I as a layperson I would encourage those of you who had reservations to speak up and say what they were okay yeah well, I don't know Edwin and I are kind of shy at town meeting yeah <laughs> yeah but well, okay. Edwin, Edwin might be the one speaking on behalf of it if Chris doesn't show up at town meeting he cannot uh, he I can't. Not speak at it. I can't <laughs> um, okay uh, there was no other business not reasonably anticipated 48 hours in advance. I'll I, I actually have one thought, sorry. Oh, okay. Um, I, in the past, I've noticed some nice articles in the newspaper about what the CPA is doing. I don't know if Andy, if you did like a press release or if that's something that the committee, you know, it just seemed like there'd be something in the paper. Yeah. I think it's nice for people in Hadley to see that the CPA committee yeah. Usually I, usually I just called Scott and s spoke to him about what was happening. All right. Oh. Well, that's a thought for maybe Amy and, or Edwin or, you know, of because no. um, it, it's nice to have people see, get a heads up of what's coming, but also to realize, you know, you, you like people to be reminded there's good reason for the CPA payments that they're making. Um, right. I, and I, I personally think if there's, someone in town that hasn't heard of the CPA and what the CPA does. They've been living with their head in the sand for the last. But it's well, good to remind happen. them. Another thing I used to do is to bring copies of the proposals down to the library to keep them on file. But they said no one ever came to look at them, but at least they were there. Right. But, well, oh, I, one more thing before we finish, since you said other meeting things and, and talking about the marketing and what CPA does. The, the Hopkins fields, aren't they, they're going, they're being um, done now, right? Wouldn't that right. be good to have a big sign out there saying, you know, some type of wooden sign or something out there saying, you know, CPA CPA fund. dollars at work. There, there, used, yeah. there used to be one. There used to be I, one. I don't know what happened to it. There's a, you know, for $70, $80, we could get a really nice banner from, you know, the printing company, Sunrise. Yep. That we could use for various you, things. You can vote to use money from the administrative fund for that. We've got 3000 And it doesn't have to go through town meeting. The applicant who received the money put that up. Why should it be uh, on oh. us to do that? Well, if it's a banner that we can use for project to project, right. you know, if it just said CPA funds at work, it could yeah. be put. Okay. You yeah. know, one banner could be used for years. <laughs> you can use it over and over again, sure. Yep. That's Are you great. making a motion, Mary? Does that need to be a motion? If yep. you're gonna if you're gonna spend money from the administrative fund, then yeah. Yeah, motion and a vote. I make a motion that we 
order a banner to, that says CPA dollars at Headley CPA dollars at work. I second that. Uh, this has to go before town meeting. No, no I don't believe so. We have, Not we have a three thousand dollar administrative fund. Right, that's already been okay. approved. Okay. Um, okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, any other comment? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, that is unanimous. So then the next question is who wants to do the... Oh, whose idea to... was it? That's, that's <laughs> the way it used to work. Is who asked the question, you get the... Yeah. Uh, it's, either who, it's either whose idea it was or who's not present. Oh, Denise raised her hand. I can do that. That would be mm -hmm. wonderful, Denise. Thank you. I, I work in West Springfield. It's harder to <laughs> follow okay, up. Okay, and Denise will do. Okay. And it CPA dollars at work. It can be seen. Do I need to put down who seconded Mary's motion? Yep. I believe so, yeah. Well, you probably should. And so who did? I think I, I did, Amy. Okay, um, okay. Does anybody have anything else? I would like to entertain a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, we have a motion by Paulette and a second by Mark. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Amy and Mary, for your diligent work and Paulette for letting us know and letting, be in our conscience. Sorry. Um, well done. <laughs> Thank you very much. Do we need to meet before the town meeting to go over that letter of... Um, agreement or is that i, I think you i think so who's gonna uh so we're gonna uh, schedule one more meeting before the town meeting which is uh when the 17th 17th of october all right and since i stuck my foot out there i will get in contact with molly to find out what they've got for drafts and go through that okay should we should we try to set up? We've been meeting on Monday. Do you think October twelfth? That's, I mean, that's six days. I don't know if they're. I don't know if they'll be no, ready. But that's what. What is what's the content? Well, what does the committee feel? Actually, that's the holiday, so that's not. That's not. That's Indigenous Peoples Day. Yeah, that's the holiday, so it's probably not good. Hmm. Um. What do we feel? What nights are not good for who? Yes. Second <laughs> Tuesday night that week. Could we have a, the CONCOM has a meeting then? Second Tuesday, right. we that have a meeting. Tuesday, so that's not. You said they cannot do Thursday night, but I can do any other night. So maybe Wednesday? How about the 14th, October 14th, Wednesday? Okay. And, you know, if they aren't, Paulette, if, there's, if they aren't ready, then we won't meet. But if they yep. are, it'd be nice to be able to follow through with that. Yep. Uh, uh, what did we say, the 14th? October 14th, 7 p.m. That's a meeting for us, you're saying? Yes. For the letter of agreement. Letter of agreement. LOA. Yep. Okay, I'll set it up with, uh, uh, I'll get it posted. Thank you. With uh, Carolyn? Yeah. October 14th at seven, Zoom. Yep. And it should be quick. <laughs> Hopefully. Okay, um, anybody else have anything else? And I'd like to vote to adjourn. Yes, we had a motion to adjourn by Paulette and a second by Mark. So now we can vote. Okay, all those in favor of adjourning? Aye. I'll see you all on Wednesday the 14th. Thank you very much, everyone. You've been all right. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Thanks, Mark.